in a championship dominated by two drivers. A six-event season is essentially a race to four. Win four events and you win it all. For Subaru Rally Team USA, the race to four is almost complete. David Higgins and Craig Drew have dominated. They have three wins over Pastrana and Durant's single victory. The red Subaru has its back against the wall. Drop another event to their teammates, and their hopes for a championship title ends here. It may seem lopsided, but it hasn't been. Events have been won and lost by mere seconds and could have gone to either team. And after a record run up the Mount Washington Auto Road, Pastrana has the wind in his sails as the battle resumes at the New England Forest Rally. Higgins and Drew have a buffer. With two events remaining, they have two chances to clinch their title. Pastrana needs to win them both. This is launch control. It's a quiet day in Maryland. For Travis Pastrana, it's a rare moment to reflect before the championship battle resumes in just three days. We really blew it at STPR. Um, when I say we, it was me. Actually, Robbie did a great job, but uh, and I was given a gift and that would have tied up the points. But right now, we got to be home for a couple days, which has been been nice, getting ready for the Nitro Circus show. Uh, it's gonna be in my hometown in Annapolis, Maryland. If we want to beat David in this championship, if we want a shot at it, I've got to take the momentum from last week's Climb to the Clouds. Probably the greatest single day of my life with the most amazing Subaru I've ever driven, most amazing car I've ever driven. And we've got to go like hell from the beginning. We've got to be perfect. Him and Craig are they're phenomenal. They're really good at what they do. But uh, there's a lot of new roads, so I'm giving help. But even the quiet days are relative in Pastrana land. So my job in Nitro Circus is actually to come up with new crazy ways for people to do stuff that's never been done before and to do it safely. So as the head of safety for Nitro Circus, We've got a lot of really cool stuff that we, you know, kind of play around with. As if a championship battle wasn't already a heavy load. The day after the rally, Travis's Nitro Circus Show is on its way to his hometown for the first time ever. So we have Greg Duffy coming down here. <laughs> Figure out how to make everything as safe as possible. That's how the circus goes off. No, you're good. All right, crawl out the side. Ah, it's pretty awesome being around here. This is uh, this is my house. This is Maryland. Um, we got a lot of interesting toys, uh, mostly for adults. But to have the kids grow up around here, it's uh, definitely playland. That's true. I don't know if you can see it, but you'll feel it when she gets on the gas. You will? Yeah. How? A few days later, the sun rises over Sunday River Ski Resort in Maine. This is where the championship battle will be won or delayed. For David Higgins, the goal is to turn the page after a rare crash at Mount Washington. For sure, it's, it's a huge disappointment, but at the same time, um, the bigger picture is the whole season, the whole season's a rally championship. The second I sort of finished the event, we were straight back into New England mode, and we can, we can seal things up if, it, if we have a good rally here, but it's, it's one of those events where you need a lot of things to go right for you. For Pastrana, it's now or never. This is going to be a really fun rally. Um, it's going to be a lot of attrition. The, the rocks, uh, you're going to have to be lucky and good. And uh, we have nothing to lose. We have to win this race to, to stay in the championship hunt. So. It's a rare moment in this team's history where both of their drivers have a chance at the title this deep into the season. The following 104 stage miles will play a significant role in this season's story.
defending champions are the first on the line. Historically, this event has been one of both success and disappointment. But they aren't looking back. They start each event knowing they're the class of the field. And if anyone else wants to win this weekend, they'll have to go through them first. But this year, the playing field has an interesting twist. Rally regulations state that a stage cannot have an average speed over 80 miles per hour. Any cars exceeding the average speed receive the same nominal stage time. Both Subarus are expected to hit the maximum average on numerous stages this weekend, so the fight will be down to the remaining stages. For Pastrana and Durant, the strategy is simple. Flat out to win the most stages and win the event. They aren't checking the clock. Back with Higgins and Drew, they hit the 80 mile per hour average on one of the two opening stages. Travis has managed to hit it on both. Now, on the long afternoon stages, Higgins doesn't want to concede more time. He's only 2.5 seconds behind, but the lead going into day two would mean a better road position out front of all the dust. But Pastrana and Durant feel the same way. They're pushing hard to avoid losing the advantage. When the dust settles, Higgins regains the lead, thanks in part to an impact that rocked the 199 team. What was a head-to-head -head battle has ended for the day, and maybe the weekend. Co-driver Robbie Durant has suffered the effects of a heavy impact at the end of the last stage. Robbie and the team are worried the jump has damaged his back. I'll go forward to the shifter, because his legs are still, legs still have room, but we'll keep him back in it, back in it. The team's taking no chances, and the medics are called in. Um, went off a jump that we had marked as flat, and um, just landed, and uh, I think his back is pretty bad. He lost, he couldn't talk, couldn't breathe, but he's a trooper, man. We had about two miles to go. He's like, don't stop, keep going. And uh, we, I think we lost the stage today by like three seconds, so it puts us um, second for tomorrow. But as the rules are stated right now, I don't, I don't think like there's no way he's gonna be able to go. We've had a good day. It's been super close battle. We're just in the lead, but now obviously our concerns with our teammates and, um, and how Robbie is. While Robbie's well-being is priority, it's clear he won't be able to continue. So the team takes a close look at the rule book and it would appear there's a gray area. Right now in the rule book, it says you can't switch driver and co-driver. It said if there's an injury or an illness, you can go uh, basically to the steward and ask to, I think what it means is switch spots where the driver can be co-driver, the co-driver can be driver, maybe loose. So um, I'm gonna see what they'll let us do. The decision will take time. So both teams finish the day with a verdict looming. It was a long night, with Robbie out of commission. Would the event organizers and the competitors be willing to accept a co-driver change in the 199 car? And who would be available and qualified to step in on such short notice? When the cars arrive at the opening stage of the day, Subaru Rally Team USA's on-site marketing director, Greg Dorman, is sitting in the hot seat. I guess this weekend will be co-driver 199, but uh, usually um, marketing coordinator. So the focus Greg's up by um, suit and everything, hasn't he? Oh, is he squeezed in there? Yes. Yeah. I am excited. We'll get him to the finish. David's actually sitting first and second. He's driving that car. He's co-driving this car. It might be the last time you wear that suit. Higgins enters the stage as the event leader. His gap to second is only a few seconds, but with a new untested co-driver in Pastrana's car, Higgins and Drew will certainly pull away. It might be the ride of a lifetime, but it's a world of pressure. What? Do you know what this is? It's, a, it's fast, over crest, and shorting left six. I don't know. Good luck with that. Three, two, one. 
go. 70, max left 5, 75, left 6 over crest. Travis is never one to shy away from a challenge. If Rally has the equivalent of a Hail Mary pass, this is it. It only takes a stage for the team to find their rhythm. 70, right 6 over 250, Titans max. Right 6 over 250, Titans max. Then what? 1050, the left 6 long, Titans 5 over crest. They pick up the pace on the second stage. Higgins and Drew run at a comfortable pace. They feel they just need to get the car to the finish to lock in another championship. But maybe they've underestimated their teammates. Three stages into the day, the gap to second has only grown by a few seconds. At service, both teams realize there is still a battle to be fought. Greg Dorman, I tell you what, wasn't half bad. We actually, we won a stage. One, one of them, Should be there. It wasn't too bad, actually. Uh, we probably took it a little bit easy on the first one. Uh, it was a wide, fast-flowing stage. But, you know, two stages later, we took a stage win. So I guess it's not that bad. Yes. Yeah, we had a bit of an interesting first stage. Went to the first stage and helped Craig's helmet was broken. So um, we had no intercom for the first stage. But then we managed to figure out we were able to switch um, switch helmets over and go through. And then we got the last few say of being OK, just trying to take it easy. That was the thing. I mean, the first stage, uh, Dave's intercom didn't work. And we, uh, you know, with Greg, we were kind of feeling it out. And the second stage, we just did really smooth. And we only lost six to David. And I'm like, I'm like Dave, David's toning it down. I'm like, Let, let's go. Um, obviously, we, we were under the impression that Travis was going to drive for the drive for the podium. But then um, he's had other ideas and going, been going flat out and end up into a big race again. So not what we thought the plan was. So um, we just have to readjust now and go and get back to business. With expectations recalibrated and the 30 minutes of allotted service time elapsed, both Subarus head out to continue where they left off. Higgins and Drew know what they have to do. Pile on the pressure. Take serious time where Pastrana cannot. Commit to corners that require complete trust in the notes. Pastrana's committed to the battle, and Dorman is doing well. But he's still forced to take big risks and test his faith in the instructions. Max left six plus over crest. 30, right six plus, 55. Right five late at crest. Left five minus over pumps. As the battle progresses, the gap grows to 40 seconds, and it seems all is settled. That is, until disaster strikes on the penultimate stage, where both cars suffer severe damage. Thirty minutes to rebuild the back end of two rally cars. That's the mission. Higgins is first to arrive. He's dragged the car the entire 26-mile transit back to service. Right, come on, boys, do your magic. Unbelievable, literally avoiding all the rocks, just driving down the middle, nothing, no wall, and then just a bang at the back, and it all just hell let loose. Pastrana shows up three minutes later. I think we hit the same rock. It's like a mile in on that last stage, and we just drove real slow through through the stage. And I think David must have driven a bit harder because uh, they took that right rear completely off. Every member on the team is in full thrash mode. On the 75 car, disassembly of the entire back end is required. Passenger side wheel assembly removed. Subframe removed. Preparation to weld in a new trailing arm connector has begun. The intense service has drawn a crowd, and one person in particular has made the trip all the way from Australia to see it. My name is Molly Taylor. I'm from Australia, and I drive for the Subaru team back in the Australian Rally Championship. And so I just really wanted to come over, 
disguise it as a holiday, but really to uh, just see the rallying scene over here. Uh, you know, I'm really overwhelmed by the size of the place here, and I knew it was going to be, uh, you know, pretty big and impressive. But to see the amount of R&D and design and fabrication that they do in house is uh, pretty incredible and much more than I expected. You know, just to see another Subaru domestic team and see, you know, Subaru fans all over the world and. Uh, I think wherever you go in rallying, it's the same sort of people that you meet, so it's great to uh, you know, go and experience that on the other side of the world. The rules in Australia don't allow for the same level of car development as here in America. So this is a rare treat and also a rare sight. This is the first time this season where the battle has risen to this level of destruction. This crew is amazing. I said it before and I'll say it again. Thank you, Subaru. You guys rock. Pastrana's car is almost ready to head back out, but Higgins is still under the knife. Uh, just, just weld this right here. He's likely to leave late, which should hand the lead back to his teammate. An unbelievable turn of events after all that happened on day one. If there's anything we need to finish on the transit, Charlie, just leave it and finish it. Well, yeah, we kind of tired. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't need to put those in. That's correct. The clock expires, and Higgins is still in service. Penalties are mounting. Pastrana heads out penalty free. By the time Higgins leaves service, his lead is evaporated and he's now in second place. With no rear brakes and front wheel drive only. But with a car that can get him to the end of the event with his championship lead intact. On the final stage, Pastrana keeps the pressure on. He's been given a sliver of hope and that's all he needs. His rival is limping and he needs a win. He crosses the line having done all he can do. Okay, good work. Well, what was our I said good work, that was good. 347. 47, that was good. Yeah? You did a good job. We, uh, I got a little ahead of you that one spot, but I'm proud of you, man. Good work, thank you. We drove the hell out of it. I tell you what, Greg, I couldn't have expected anything else. The team getting us back out there, I, no matter where we get, that was more than anyone needed. Had to ask for everybody. We gotta get out of here. Sorry, guys. Higgins follows. He's watched a sure win slip away to a second place in a final event showdown. It's frustrating. Well, in service, we stayed before last, lost the rear end car. I have had to do this stage with no brakes, no rear drive shafts and just limp through, so. Rallies are a race against time team versus the road. So when a fellow competitor needs a hand, a spare tire, a wrench, they help out. They'll win on the stages, not through misfortune. The fact that we're even still in this rally is a tribute to the drivers, to the camaraderie, to rally um, in the USA. The other drivers came together, no one protested. Everyone talked to the stores and said, yes, we want Travis to be in this. That's the only reason we even have a shot. Greg Dorman, I underestimated him. I didn't think we had a, a chance in the world, and we won two stages today. To, to hear some of the words that are coming from Travis, it's, it's an honor. It's an honor to sit in one in 99, and um, some of the stages, it was probably the fastest I ever co-drove, so. When day one ended, the outcome seemed clear. The number 75 car would cruise to victory. Most of the time, skill wins out. But this weekend, it paid to be lucky. Pastrana's championship hope lives on until the Ojibwe rally, where the teammates will face off for the title at the final rally of the season. We're still in it because of the other drivers. We won because we made the fewest mistakes, had the most luck, and winner take all next round. Oh, wait, wait, here we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi. So um, we got done. I broke him, but he's actually standing now, which is good. Better and then than yesterday. Yep. Uh, then we got Greg, and uh, the three of us won the rally, and now we got this. 
kind of tired, but I uh, can't be tired tomorrow or the next day or the next week. So let's go do this Nitro Circus. It's gonna be great. Happy days, Nitro. Is this your first Nitro show? Yeah. Yes, it is. All right. What exactly has got in store for us? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm not gonna make it on time because I gotta learn no backflips this morning. Ah, yeah, something. I'm not okay there. Uh, I'm, maybe I'm just too old. That's very possible. Like, that looks good, right? Yeah, that's your angle, yeah. That was good. Felt good, looks good, send it to Do not go circus fashion. We're gonna go zero to 140 miles an hour. Real quick, real fast. Who's ready to jump on the wild train? Big Walker, quick team, under a balloon spiraling! 